Welcome students uh, to this another lecture in the series of uh, learning algorithms and today our uh, topic is asymptotic notations. So in uh, our lecture of space and time complexity, we learned uh, how to calculate uh, the uh, time complexity of the algorithm. But we saw there that once we are calculating the time complexity of an algorithm, we only consider higher order terms. We don't focus much on the uh, constants associated or the lower order terms. So you get an idea that what we are doing is that we are making approximations, okay? So once we are making approximations, we need to know how close this approximation is, means if we calculated uh, the time complexity of an algorithm as uh, say log n or n cube, we need to know if n cube uh, is, the, uh, uh, is the worst uh, time complexity of an algorithm, means can our algorithm go beyond n cube or, or can it do better than n cube, okay? So those things we need to know and for that we use uh, asymptotic notations. So asymptotic notations are, uh, these are mathematical tools used to represent uh, the time complexity of an algorithm for your asymptotic analysis. So having said that, uh, what, does, what do you mean by asymptotic analysis? We have talked about asymptotic analysis, but I have not uh, mentioned the name for that. So what actually asymptotic analysis means is that we, when we analyze the efficiency of an algorithm, uh, without depending on the machine specific constraints means that we don't actually implement the algorithm as a program and uh, then uh, compare the uh, results uh, with another algorithm but before implementing as, as a program or before uh, uh, you know uh, making it a machine specific program we want to check the efficiency of an algorithm and for that we use uh, your asymptotic analysis so Asymptotic notations are basically, uh, we have three major uh, or main uh, asymptotic notations that we will be studying. Uh, apart from that, there are two more, but we won't be uh, studying them uh, in this course. So we will be looking at uh, the big O, the big om omega and uh, the theta notation, okay? So uh, let us begin with uh, the big O notation. If you remember when we were studying or calculating the time complexity of algorithm, uh, I used something like this, O n square, okay? And at that, that time I told you that you should uh, think of this O as order. But actually what that O meant uh, was this, okay? It's that big O. And it has a certain meaning behind it. So now we will be seeing what that uh, O actually means. So first of all, I will write uh, the definition of uh, your uh, big O notation. So if we have a function f of n and we say that it is equal to big O of g of n. We have a function f of n and we are saying that it is order of g of n, okay? So what does that actually mean? So it means that this order of g of n, it is actually a set of functions, means it's not one function, there can be more than one functions in it. And it is defined as So I have written this definition and uh, you can find same definitions in uh, all standard textbooks uh, of algorithms. So what I have written here is that when we say that f of n is order of g of n, it means that uh, there exists a positive constant c and n0 such that 
f of n should be greater than or equal to 0 means it should be a non-negative function but it should be less than or equal to c multiplied by g of n for all n greater than or equal to n0. Now this statement or this definition might look confusing but it is basically a pretty simple definition and we have already seen and used it. So what we are doing the big O notation is actually it sets the upper bound means whatever time complexity you have uh, calculated it sets the upper bound on your algorithm means that it is not the actual it is it is closer to your uh, uh, the time complexity of your algorithm but it is higher than it means it is setting the upper bound for your algorithm. I will give you an example we saw uh, in the lecture when we studied about uh, time and space complexity we uh, saw an example 406 n and n square. So there I told you that uh, for uh, whenever n is greater than 406 then algorithm 2 is better. So what is that n greater than 406 or n greater than 2 means there is a certain point after which the behavior of that function change or the growth of that function change and that is this n0 over here. We have to identify that point beyond which that function will have a definite growth means beyond that this will always set as an upper bound for that function okay. We will see an example and it will be more clear to you but before going to the example I will show you graphically what do we mean by this definition. I will plot a graph here okay. So consider that your f of n it is something like this this is your f of n okay. Now when you say g of n here this g of n which is big O means which is the upper bound how we will represent it we will represent it something like this. So this is your g of n. So you can see that at up to this point here your g of n is below your f of n after this point it is above your f of n and after this point it is again on this point it is again below your f of n so up to this point the behavior is not that much specific okay up to this point but after this point you can see that g of n is always above your f of n means it has set an upper bound on your f of n and this point is your n0 okay. So this point is your n0 and this is your f of n and because it is uh, setting the upper bound there will be a constant multiplied by your g of n that is what I have written that f of n is a non-negative function which is less than or equal to c into g of n which is this one for all n greater or equal to n0 means beyond this point okay. So we will take an example if f of n is equal to 2n plus 3 okay. So 2n plus 3 will be less than or equal to say 10n okay. I can write this for all n greater than 1. If I see this function for every value including 1 greater than or equal to 1 if I substitute here if I say use 1 that will be uh, 2 plus 3 is 5 which will be less than or equal which will be less than 10 and so on when you will be using any value that is greater than or equal, equal to 1 this will always be true. So when this is true what are you write, writing actually this is f of n it is less than or equal to this 10 is your c okay and this n is your g of n. So here c is equal to 10 and n0 is equal to 1. So that is why you can say that this f of n it is order of n because g of n is n okay that is why we can write that f of n is order of n because order of n is here g of n 
c is your 10 and n is equal to 1 okay so now you might be thinking that how i did this how did i know i have to write 10 n actually there are ways to do it the one of the simplest way is that you can simply you can simply do one thing if you have say 2n plus 3 what you can do is that you can simply add n to both uh, to this term this already has n you can add n to this so it will be less than or equal to 2n plus 3n okay it will be less than or equal to 5n this is also true here your c is 5 your g of n is n and your n0 is again 1 greater than or equal to 1 so again your f of n is order of n fine now there is a catch when we say that it imposes an upper limit you can go anywhere which is you can go to any value which is higher than f of n okay so what does that mean that means i can write I can write 2n plus 3 is less than 2n square plus 3 square, 3n square. It is true. And which will result into 5n square. Fine. Here your c is 5. Your g of n is n square. And again, your n0 is 1. So I can say f of n is equal to order of n square yes it's also true so you can see that any time complexity any function which is higher than n will be big o of your this 2n plus 3 so does that mean we can write f of n is equal to order of say n cube or order of uh, say n log n yes we can write but we should always try to write that value which is more closer to your this value i can give you an example say uh, i have to buy a car and i ask you to tell me uh, what is the price of a car that i need to buy so i'll tell you basically i need a uh, petrol petrol driven car tell me so there are petrol driven cars whose cost is you know say uh, 10 lakh 20 lakh 50 lakhs or even crores of rupees but if you will say me that uh, the uh, cost of the car is say 70 lakh or 80 lakh you won't be wrong, wrong but that information won't be useful to me because what i want is that i want that car which will be within my budget or say plus minus uh, some amount so in the same way when you write f of n is order of g of n you can write here n log n you can write n cube you can write n square and you can write g n but you can see the more useful value is n and therefore we should come more closer to our actual function and we should try to give the most closest value which sets the upper bound for your f of n if you remember uh, we in the uh, time and space complexity lecture we saw uh, and growth of functions we saw certain functions and we saw how they grow so i will write those functions over here so that you will get an idea what upper uh, limit we have in your big o notation so we have one then we have order of log n then we have order of under root n then we have order of n then we have order of n log n then we have order of n square and then we have order of 2 raised power n so i have not written all of those uh, functions because we have limited space here but it will do uh, in that lecture what i did i didn't uh, i just wrote 1 and log n and under root n but the right way to write is order of n so I deliberately didn't write order of n because at that time it would have been confusing because you didn't uh, had any idea about the asymptotic notations at that point. So right now this one function that is your uh, 2n plus 3 it is this function that is order of n here it is. So 
your order of n is this. This is also order of n, means this, these all functions are your big O of n. So you can write this function as order of n, or you can write it as order of n log n, or you can write it as order of n square. But the more far away you are, the more uh, useless that information is, and more closer you are to this value, the more better that value is. So this I will here write big O, these one on the right hand side, okay? So after this, we will see the second notation, that is omega notation. So now we will see omega notation. What I have done, I have left the uh, previous definition over here. I have done it on, on purpose because uh, it will help you get an idea. So f of n is equal to omega of g of n. What, uh, what big O did, it set the upper limit. And what omega will do, it will set the lower limit. So we say that f of n is equal to omega g of n. And the definition is the same. f of n, there exists positive constants. C and n0, such that f of n will be a non-negative greater than 0, but here it will be less than this. There's only one difference and that is this sign. Because big O set the upper limit, therefore f of n was less than c of g of n. But here it sets the lower limit. So f of n is greater than c multiplied by g of n. And rest of the definition is same. There are no changes. So, uh, we will see it graphically first. So if this is your, again, if this is your, this is your f of n, okay, and this will be your c multiplied by g of n. Again, you can see up to this point, the behavior is not constant, but at, after this point, that is n0, c multiplied by g of n is always less than, means it is setting the lower limit for your f of n. And this is your omega notation. So if you have understood big O notation, you can very easily understand omega notation. The only difference is that c multiplied by g of n was higher in case of big O, and c multiplied by g of n is lower in case of omega notation, okay? So we'll take same example. 2n plus 3, okay? So now what we want to do, we want to make it greater than, not less than. So we know if f of n is equal to 2n plus 3, we know that 2n plus 3 will be greater than 2n. It will always be greater than 2n because whatever n is, we, have, we are adding 3 more to it, okay? So what is uh, what are the different values here? The values is, this is your c, this n is your g of n, and your n0 is again greater than or equal to 1. Okay? So it's not always necessary that you have to write this c. We can omit this c, uh, sorry, we can omit this 2, and then c will be 1. Okay? You can simply write 2n plus 3 is greater than n. So here we can write there will be only change in the notation, that is omega of n, f of n is equal to omega of n. So, now you can understand the importance of these notations. When I write f of n is big O of n, and when I write f of n is omega of n, they don't mean the same thing. Although, you can say that the time complexity of your function is n. In both cases, that is true. But if you want to actually have the better comprehension of the time complexity, in this case, you will understand that here n is setting the lower limit for your function. And here, when it comes to big O, it is setting the upper limit. Okay? So, if we try to understand same here. What do you think? 
will be the omega notation for this uh, any function that is actually your order of n we can write that for this function we can write f of n is equal to omega of under root n yes we can write it is true so you can see if this is your n anything on the left hand side will be your omega okay omega is written over here so anything that is upper that upper bounds it is your big o and these functions that is the lower bound that is your omega notation and because there are more than one functions i have only written three over here and three over there there can be an n number of functions because there are multiple functions that is why we are writing it in set builder form that is we are using the definition of a set so this is a set of functions it's not just one function it's a set of functions and when we talk, say set there can be multiple elements in a set okay so now having an idea of big o and theta we feel that like i gave you the example of car that uh, a car can cost say 50 uh, lakh rupees or even uh, it can cost around 2 uh, or 3 lakh rupees so you will think that there should be a, uh, there should be a constraint that will limit both ways means if big o is limiting the upper side and uh, the omega notation is limiting the lower side won't it be better if we had something that will limit both ways the upper as well as the lower side so that we will get a more accurate uh, assumption about uh, the time complexity of a algorithm yes that's true and that's where, where our third notation comes in that is your theta notation and what theta notation does it simply uses both of these omega as well as big o it will set the upper limit as well as the lower limit so we say f of n is equal to theta of g of n what does it mean it means that f of n there exists positive constants now because we are concerned about upper and lower limit so there will be two constants c1 c2 okay there won't be uh, in previous example we had only constant c but here we will be having two constants c1 c2 and of course we will be having our own n0 okay such that so you can see that we have combined the previous two definitions there exists positive constant c1 c2 and n0 such that it is greater than 0 means it's a non negative function c1 multiplied by gn is less than f of n this is your what this is your omega notation and f of n is less than or equal to c2 of gn and this is your big o notation for all n greater than or equal to n0 so graphically if we see if this is your f of n so when we saw big o big o was something like this okay and when we saw so this one was your c1 sorry c2 g of n i wrote c2 because c f of n is less than c of 2 okay and uh, then for your omega notation you had something like this okay so we have to actually bring a common n0 so what we will do is that we will try to make their behavior common at a single point so it's something like this so now at this point which is n0 beyond this point you can see beyond this point you can see f of n is always greater than c1 gn and is always less than c2 gn okay and that is what your definition means we have to find a tight uh, notation the theta notation is also called as tight notation why because it brings both upper as well as lower limits 
your big O only brings in your upper limit and your omega only brings your lower limit. So what we do in theta notation is that we use two constants C1 and C2. But the important thing here is to know that in both cases we are having G of n. Means here we have G of n and here also we have G of n. The only thing different is the constants that are multiplied with it. Okay. So we will see an example so that you will get an idea. We'll take same example that we took for your big O and your omega notation. That is 2n plus 3. Okay. We saw that 2n was less than or equal to your f of n which is 2n plus 3 and it was itself less than or equal to 5n. This portion we saw when we were studying big O and this left hand side we saw when we were studying your omega notation. For all n greater than or equal to 1. Okay. So what is here? This 2 is your C1. Fine. This n is your G of n. Okay. And this is your F of n of course. Now here this 5 is your C2 and this n is again your g of n. Fine. So what we can say is that your f of n is theta n. Theta n. Fine. Like I said before, we have n here, we have n here. Means g of n and g of n, both uh, on right hand side as well as on left hand side. Had it been like this, then we cannot say this because here g of n is n, here it is something else, it is say uh, t of n because here it is n square, here it is n. If we have both, we should have n at both places, n or n square, whatever uh, the time complexity of the algorithm is. The only difference is between the constants and both exhibit same behavior at n0 which is your 1, fine. So we can say that f of n is theta of n means that the tight complexity, you can now say that f of n is order of n, f of n is omega of n and f of n is also theta of n. So now you can see the difference that if somebody writes order of n, somebody writes omega of n or somebody writes theta of n, what do they actually imply? What do they actually mean? Looking at this example, this one will be your theta. So on the right hand side, we have upper bound, that is your omega. On the left hand side, we have your lower bound, that is your, uh, sorry, on the right hand side, you have upper bound, that is your big O. On left hand side, you have your uh, lower bound, that is omega. And the exact tight bound is your theta, okay? So you can see it is sort of intersection, means if I take this, these as big O, and I take these as your omega, so this is the intersection, and that is your theta, okay? So that is your uh, asymptotic notations, omega, uh, we have uh, big O, and we have theta. Now we will see uh, some examples and you will understand how to calculate it and uh, what do we actually mean by these notations. Say we have f of n which is equal to 2n square plus 3n plus 4. Okay. So what I will do is that I will simply add n square to every term. So I will get 2n square plus 3n plus 4. It will be less than or equal to 2n square plus 3n square plus 4n square, okay? So it will be less than or equal to, this will be 9n square, okay? So we can say this is your f of n. So what we can say is that here c is uh, 9 and n0 is 1. So we can say f of n is equal to order of n square, fine? Now for same thing, we will try to find the lower uh, limit. We can say that 2n square plus 3n 
plus 4 is greater than or equal to n square. We have omitted these two terms, so it will be obviously greater than that. Here c is 1 and your n0 is again 1, so we can say that your f of n is equal to omega of n square. Fine. So we can again put it in the same way as we did with the previous example. What we will do is that we can say that this one it will be on your left hand side means n square is less than or equal to your f of n is less than or equal to this 9n square. So you can see that this is here c1 is 1, c2 is 9 and g of n is n square. So we can also say that f of n is theta of n square, fine. We will see another example for the same thing, n square log n plus n, okay, this is another. So I won't be now solving it, I will just be writing it down and you will understand that uh, if it is true or not. So I can say that n square log n will be less than or equal to n square log n plus n will be less than or equal to 10 n square log n. Is it true or not? Yes, it is true because I have removed n from here, so it will be less than this. I have multiplied it 10 times, so obviously it is going to be greater than this. And you can check it also for some values. So here again you can say that this is your uh, this is your omega n square log n means your f of n is omega n square log n and this is your big O n square log n okay we can also say that if I take here 1 so I can say that this is c1 which is 1 and g of n which is n square log n. Here I can say c2 is 10 and g of n is again n square log n. So g of n is same at both places so c1 and c2 is 1 and 10 respectively. So we can say that f of n is theta n square log n. So say we have n factorial, we want to see uh, the upper and lower bounds for it as well as the tight bound that is your theta. So we know uh, what n factorial actually means, n factorial actually means uh, 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by so so on n minus 1 and then multiplied by n, okay. So if I replace each value with 1, say I write 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 1 so so on multiplied by 1. So it will be obviously less than or equal to this that is 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 3 multiplied by so so on n minus 1 multiplied by n. Again, what I'll do, I'll replace every term with n. So I'll write, it will be less than n multiplied by n multiplied by n, so, so on, n minus 1 multiplied by n. So what I'm doing, so here it won't be n minus 1, it will be n. So what I'm doing, I have written n factorial here and I have replaced n with 1 here, so it will be less than. And I have replaced 1, uh, sorry, uh, each term with n, so it will be greater than. So what will this be equal to? This will be equal to 1 and it will be less than or equal to what is this? This is your n factorial and it will be less than or equal to n raised power n, okay. So what is this one here? It is your 1, it is constant, okay. And what is on the higher side? Higher side it is 1 multiplied by n raised power n. So your g of n is n raised power n. 
okay so what you can say is that this is the lower side you can say that f of n is omega 1 okay the lower side is omega 1 constant time and the upper side that is your big o that is your g of n is n raised power n your c is 1 so it is order of n raised power n so your f of n is big o of n raised power n and it is omega of 1 but you cannot compute the uh, tight case or the theta here because you can see here g of n is n raised power n and here g of n is 1 so because they are different we cannot combine it and say that uh, it is uh, theta of n raised power n or theta of 1 okay so i have shown you some examples and in previous examples we were able to calculate lower bound upper bound as well as tight bound but in this example we calculated lower bound we calculated upper bound that is uh, omega and uh, big o but we are not able to calculate the theta and uh, that finishes our asymptotic notations in today's lecture we saw what asymptotic notation means we saw uh, what asymptotic notations are used for they are used for asymptotic analysis and then we saw three notations that is big o we saw omega and we saw theta we saw graphical representations of them and we also solved some examples to see how they are calculated and what they actually mean so i hope that you understood the concept of uh, asymptotic notations and uh, i hope to see you in next lecture thank you Thank you.